Today it's all about the perfect pedals for your sim racing setup with the founders of Hussingfeld and our guest Will Ford from Boosted Media. We already discussed the topic of the most important part of a sim racing setup. And if you didn't know beforehand, it is the pedals. And before we dive any deeper into pedals, you guys should first subscribe and remember to press the bell. Good pedals are just super important. We already had a talk with the founders of Hösingfeld about what makes good pedals and what they look out for in the production of those. Also, Will Ford from Boosted Media will join us in a minute. But before that, we should get everyone onto the same level, because just hearing load cells, for example, may be confusing for some of you. So let's take a look at what good pedals have to offer. Pedals are often overlooked in the overall setup, but in the end are maybe the most important part of any good one. But what's the difference between the high-end versions and the rest? First of all, there are two types of pedals, potentiometer and load cell models. In a previous Nitro Nights episode, Chris Hay already explained what makes load cell pedals way better. Upgrading pedals, like the first step from like a normal um, Hall Effect or potentiometer pedal to a load cell, which actually measures the force you're applying into the pedal rather than the sort of angular movement of the pedal up and down. Well, that makes a big difference in both your feel and the ability to actually be able to modulate the brakes correctly. With this, we've already got one big reason to spend some extra coin on a good model. But it doesn't stop there, as you can really feel each extra euro spent. More expensive models give you more precise control over the car, with the ability to have detailed control over the acceleration and better trail braking into the corners, so you can easily improve your times. But it's not just about how precisely they measure your inputs, it's also about how they feel to you. Using rubber dampers on the entry-level models and going up to hydraulic on those in the high end makes a difference you can feel. Hydraulic dampers bring the pedals back up smoothly and consistently like those you're used to on your car outside. And the best part about many good pedals? You can customize them with different plates to suit your styles or be like the ones in your real car, even though this isn't strictly necessary to let you drive to your full potential. But good pedals aren't just something to help you post better lap times. They're also something to customize and show your individuality through your rig. Beginners don't need high-end pedals, but as load cells are definitely the way forward, they should be the first thing you look to upgrade to. Everything else is just icing on the cake. Pedals have a lot of moving parts in them and a lot to look out for, as we know now. And right now, we have someone in the show who knows a whole lot about this topic. Let's welcome Will Ford, a.k.a. Boosted Media. Hey, Will. Hey, how are you going? Good. How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Can't complain. <laughs> Great. So pedals are often regarded as the most important part of a good setup. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I think it ultimately boils down to exactly what you're talking about when you're talking about a good setup. So I'm going to assume for the context of what we're talking about today here, we're talking about good in terms of being able to go fast yes. and being able to go fast consistently, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'd say really, you know, it comes down to pedals and a solid cockpit really. So those are the two fundamental things in my opinion that are important to be able to go fast and go quickly. And the reason for that is if you don't have a consistent, a consistent feel through the pedals, uh, if you've got any sort of movement or slop or any sort of inconsistency like that, it's going to kind of move things, you know, around and you're not going to get that consistent feeling inside the pedals. So one of the things that's really interesting talking to people often, you know, I get a lot of questions about this topic specifically in comments and things like that. A lot of people kind of assume that the steering wheel is the most important thing yeah. because that's, and the reason for that is because that's where you're getting the majority of your tactile feedback, right? So when you're driving, yeah. most of what you're feeling is coming through the steering wheel. So you kind of, you imagine that as being the most important thing because it's where, where most of the feedback's coming from. But really, your brain is pretty amazing at taking any sort of cues that are coming in and kind of adapting that information to understand what's going on with the car. So as long as what you're feeling through the steering wheel gives you what you need to understand what the car's doing, mm -hmm. you can kind of adapt to that and, you know, feel what's going on with the car. So beyond that, as long as that core information's there, in my opinion, at least, you know, beyond just the immersion that a high-end steering wheel gives you, 
everything that you need to fundamentally drive quickly is there in a more entry level steering wheel. So that's really where pedals come in. They give you the ability to really sort of dial in that muscle memory, really sort of understand what's going on with the car. And I think one of the big things that people don't realize is that real life race car drivers are steering the car almost as much with the pedals as they are with the steering wheel. So if I say I only have a budget, would you say um, I should concentrate more on the pedals, like budget-wise, or on the steering wheel? I think it's a. I think it's, it's a really good question. I think it's a. It's a balance between the two because yeah. obviously you want your sim racing to be fun and enjoyable. You want it to be nice and immersive, but if your primary objective is to just go as quickly as you possibly can, as consistently as you possibly can, then yeah, I would absolutely say, and this is what I do recommend to people that ask is, you know, definitely prioritize a more expensive, more expensive and more high end set of pedals uh, over, and a more expensive and more solid cockpit over a more expensive wheel and wheelbase. Yeah, because when it comes to sim racing and you want to build your own sim racing setup, it's it's all about the budget. You have to look at it. We Absolutely, also had a yeah, yeah, yeah. We also had a chat with Niels and Sven from Husingfeld, and yep. let's take a look what uh, their thoughts are about which pedals to buy. Of course, we're a high-end manufacturer, which also which also comes at a price. But for the sheer joy of racing, you can also have fun with a Logitech or Thrustmaster set. It, yeah, definitely. It really doesn't stop you from becoming a sim racer if you have a, a smaller budget. So Yeah, but it's, it's not so much about the equipment as sometimes people think it is. What makes pedals good in your opinion, Will? Oh, well, there's, uh, there's a lot of things I look for. And firstly, I would absolutely agree with what they've just said as well. We don't, the last thing we want to do and something that I'm always very conscious of in my videos is we don't want to create this illusion that you have to have, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars yeah. worth of sim racing gear to have fun. And, you know, that's, that's just not the case. So, but yeah, look, there's four things that I look for when it comes to a good set of pedals. I look for reliability, consistency, adjustability and pedal feel. And I wrote those down on a sheet in front of me there so I wouldn't miss. So really, I think, you know, there's, there's a couple of things that go into it. So in terms of reliability, obviously we don't want to have the pedals coming apart or, you know, something extreme like that when we're driving, obviously that's the end of, you know, that's a really bad problem. But we also want to have that consistency there as well. So we don't want the pedals to feel different every time we drive them. We don't want to have things working their way loose slowly as we're driving as well. I mean, one of the things I recommend a lot of the time is, you know, before a big race or, you know, once a month or so, I go in and actually check that things haven't slipped out of alignment. And a good set of pedals which will generally find that, you know, they don't change at all over yeah. the course of a month or even six months. Uh, adjustability is obviously really important as well. I think one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that race cars actually have, a, well, most race cars at least, have a really firm pedal. So it's not like driving a street car where you kind of have quite a bit of push in the pedal before it engages with the disc. Um, so if you're concentrating on one particular type of car that you're driving mostly in your sim racing, this is obviously going to be a little bit less important. But if you're wanting to drive a variety of different cars, and I think that yeah. the majority of sim racers, one of the things that's great about sim racing is the fact that you can just jump in any car at any track. So... You want to have that adjustment there so that you're able to dial in and get the experience as authentic as you can, you know, between the different kinds of cars that you're driving as well. The ability to what we call modulate your braking as you're doing that is really, really important. So what that means is you want to be able to push the pedal down enough that the, that the car is slowing down to its maximum ability without yeah. locking up. And then you might find that you're carrying a little bit too much speed as you approach the apex. So you might need to brake a little bit more, or you might find that you do start to lock up a little bit as the car starts to slow down, or maybe you touch a bit of track that's a little bit more slippery, or you might touch the grass mm -hmm. or something, you might need to lift off the brake a little bit. So being able to modulate with your pedal around that threshold point of maximum braking is really, really important. And that to me is really what's fundamental in a good set of pedals. I think You know, there are important factors when it comes to the throttle and the clutch, of course, as well. But really, the brake is where the bulk of the importance is when it comes to going fast and being consistent. So it's all about the feeling. You just pointed it out. Yeah, it, it should match to you and your driving style. And it seems like you have the same opinion with Husingfeld. So let's have a look what they said about it. The, the, the feel of a pedal it's, and, and also the quality, it's, it's really influenced by... Uh, a number of factors which work together. It has to be able to handle a high force, uh, so then you look into materials, then you look into the load cell and how it's mounted. 
uh, but it also has to run smooth and that uh, influences other assemblies like the bearings and how the springs move uh, in relation to each other. Yeah, adjustability. And is there something that you would always recommend to adjust in your pedals and look out for when buying a new one? Definitely. I think, um, well, there's, there's a couple of things that I always look for when I'm choosing pedals to put on my own rig as well as when we're doing reviews. Um, now, a lot of, when it comes to pedals, a lot of it is just purely down to subjectivity. Different people have different preferences and, you know, there's there's nothing that's sort of right or wrong when it comes to, you know, how you like your pedals to feel. But there are a couple of things that I would definitely recommend. So, look, we'll start off with the clutch because I think that's probably the most basic. Mm -hmm. A lot of pedals have a sort of two or maybe even three stage clutch feel. Uh, so the Husinger Ultimates that we reviewed just recently have this. So when you push down on the clutch pedal, you kind of get that second stage as the clutch engages in the real car and it kind of emulates that real feeling. Now, for me at least, when I'm, you know, when I'm driving a real life car, when I'm driving a sim, I don't really pay much attention to that feeling yeah. simply because, you know, when you're changing gears, you're just kind of, you know, smacking the pedal and that's not really all that significant. So adjustment there is good because people will be able to tune it in to feel the way they like. But I don't think that it really matters in terms of going quickly or consistently because it's just a personal preference thing. It's just a subjective thing. But with the throttle and the brake, there's definitely a couple of things that I would recommend as well as some things that I think a lot of people maybe get wrong. So with the throttle, um, one of the one of the main adjustments or the two adjustments that we really have with the throttle, generally speaking, is the or well, beyond just the ergonomic adjustments like tilt and all those sorts of things, which is just down to the rig that you've got it on or your body size and shape and seating position. Um, things like the amount of throw that you have in the in the throttle pedal. So uh, some cars, for example, you might want to have quite a short throw so you're able to go from zero throttle to 100 percent throttle very quickly and not lose any speed at the apex on your exit of the corner uh, other cars that maybe are really high powered you might need to be able to have a little bit more finesse in your throttle input so you might need to have a little bit more throw there a little bit more or a little bit less sensitivity just mm -hmm. to allow you to really kind of you know be very gentle on that throttle input particularly cars that don't have traction control you'll find actually the race that i did just the other day i was if you look at the if you look at the throttle inputs from the race most of my time other than on the straight was spent sort of between 30 and 80 percent throttle yeah. so if you've only got a little bit of input there it's very hard to modulate your throttle correctly because you can imagine the difference between 20 percent and 80 percent yeah, might only sure. be you know a tiny little bit so having adjustability there i think is really important the other thing with throttles as well um, and really, that's all there is to it when it comes to the throttle and the clutch. With the brake, obviously, there's a lot more yeah. stuff going on there. So we kind of touched on this before, um, talking about different adjustments between different cars. But really, it just comes down to, um, you know, making sure that you've got that really clearly defined threshold point where you're able to brake consistently to that point and then modulate around it. So you don't want to be setting the pedal so hard that you're really slamming all of your weight into it. Mm -hmm. You really want to have that level of control. Uh, a lot of braking mistakes also just come down to seating position. So you want to make sure that you're pushing from your thigh and not from your ankle. That's a mistake that I see a lot of people making. Oh, okay. um, mm -hmm. But I think the, but I think probably the biggest mistake that I see people make is they jump on a new set of pedals, and they find that they're instantly a lot slower than they were with the old pedals simply because they don't have their muscle memory. They're having to learn from scratch again. And what I find a lot of people doing is actually trying to adjust their new pedals to feel like their old pedals. Oh. And that is obviously a big mistake. So really what I'd say is, you know, take the time, get used to it. It usually only takes five, maybe 10 laps to kind of get back to where you were before. And then beyond that, you just, you just find more time and more time and more time, depending on, you know, how big the upgrade was. So really just focusing in on those things that are fundamental to driving quickly and consistently is really the key. And, you know, beyond that, it's just down to subjective choice, obviously how strong you are, seating position, type of car you're driving are all factors. So as long yeah. as you're having fun, really, you're doing everything right. All right. Thank you so much, Will, for joining us in today's episode. Yeah, if you want to share anything or say hi to someone, uh, here's the time. <laughs> well, I guess, uh, first of all, thank you to you guys for having me back again. It's good to see you all again. And yeah, hi to everybody out there watching the video. Hopefully the uh, hopefully the information we've shared today has helped you to, uh, yeah, be... Um, be more proficient in choosing the gear that's going to be best for you. And I guess one other thing just quickly to mention as well, and this is something that comes up quite often, we see discussed that, you know, a lot of professional esports drivers 
uh, you know, using relatively low end gear or sometimes very basic entry level gear as well. And they're some of the fastest people in the world. So I guess just to reinforce the point that um, the guys from Fusivelt were saying, again, you don't need to spend a fortune on gear to drive quickly. You can have just as much fun and be just as fast with more entry level gear. Obviously, it can take a little bit more training to get you there if you don't have the tools available to really set that muscle memory. But ultimately, as I said before, as long as you're having fun, that is really all that matters. So yeah, keep having fun, guys. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you missed out the last one, you can watch it right here. We visited the Sim Racing Expo and took a drive around the Nordschleife with Chris Hay. Or just check out things I wish I knew when I started playing iRacing. Have fun and see you next time.